I think one of the most compelling aspects of music is storytelling and the process of retelling stories as well. And one of the ways that I get my information um, is would be books, another would be the internet, and another one is still the newspaper. So I'm interested in the idea that you can take a and take something that appears quite temporary or appears disposable and then draw attention to it and to look at it through a different way and maybe for different reasons. I liked the idea of kind of freezing time and treating it a bit like a, a time capsule or in a way it's a bit like, I feel it's almost like cheating history because you know, you could take any edition of any newspaper, really, and imagine what it would be like to look back from 500 years and to what, what conclusions you could draw about it. So on the evening of the 20th of November, we're treating the newspaper as a score. For example, um, we have an article about a Belgian city dubbed the planet's ugliest city. And there's a tour that you can do. This guy's doing, like, an urban safari. So what I did was I've sent somebody over there to record sounds and to do the tour, so sort of bringing the story to life, if you like. The collaboration is with the London Sinfonietta. The London Sinfonietta, at its core, is made up of uh, two violins, a viola, cello, double bass, um, then a flute, oboe, uh, bassoon, clarinet, trombone, trumpet, uh, horn, uh, piano, harp, and percussion players. And that's kind of the core and that's the, that's the line-up that we'll be using uh, on the 20th. I still feel very much at the beginning of the process of working with sound and turning it into music, even though that's what I've done for the last 20 years, really. So one of the ways that you think about it is looking for differences in frequencies, so a low frequency is a mid-frequency and a high frequency, in the same way that on a drum kit you have a kick drum, a snare drum and a hi-hat. You're looking for, for these kinds of distinctions so that when it comes to organising it as music, you're trying to find ways of getting a handle on it and to be able to use it and turn it into something. I can't work out whether it's absolutely perfect or whether it's going so fast that my imagination is sort of correcting it. You probably can't hear that, but it's sort of going... So for me, then I'm like, OK, well, that's... Working like this is much more about surrendering yourself to the possibilities of sound and possibilities and surrendering yourself to the things that are going on around you about actively engaging with the process of listening rather than just being just a sort of petty dictator, which I feel like being a musician you often are because you've got so much control. It's just me and my own here and I can write a symphony this afternoon with all the sounds that I've got on a keyboard and all the possibilities. I think that's quite a modern assumption that music is about self-expression, or just about that. Um, I think it has the opportunity to express other things as well. And in surrendering yourself to these noises, they often lead you into quite unusual and unexpected places. <laughs>